So I'm glad I actually ended up doing this stream today and not yesterday. Because yesterday I wouldn't have been able to show off uh, this, which is called Undune 2. Now... So, what this is... is a remake of Dune 2 that somebody has done for the... I think it's Pico 8. Which is like... if someone had made the ultimate... Yeah, Pico 8. If someone were to make today, in 2022, a little handheld console like the Game Boy that had up, down, left, right, and then two buttons, this is what it would be. And some absolute genius has basically remade Dune 2 in it. Uh, obviously, he wasn't able to fit in the entire opening cinematic, which is why you just get this text. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. This is... I've played this for about five minutes just to make sure that I know what I'm talking about and that I can actually uh, demonstrate it properly. Very nice. So. Uh, ah, yep. So, that brings up the actual menu. So this is, this menu, um, it's worth explaining this if you if you want to play this as well, because it it's, doesn't quite work as you might expect. Uh, this menu is actually in the Pico 8 firmware itself, to a point like it's... You can select what level you want to start on, um, but it's not part of the actual game. Uh, the real controls for this are up, down, left, right, and then Z and X. Which I can show you here. Uh, fortunately, there is actually mouse control. It's like a Game Boy with a USB port. I love the little bullet icon, that's so cute. And this is it. How, how gorgeous is this? It's also really funny that he's recreated the first level thing of dropping you to 999 credits. So, it is a surprisingly faithful adaptation. Gosh, I have this ridiculous anxiety in my mind of I'm not doing things fast enough because I'm trying to. I'm used to trying to speedrun. Um, I need to slow down and realize I'm just casually playing this now. So yeah, this is this is low resolution. I think it's what it actually reminds me of is Micro Machines. Just in the way that these things move about, the way they rotate. Um, it's still faithful to like a grid-based thing, but... Yep, here we go. So you can click on the little radar, and you can tell as well, like this is... This is the quarter map. This is what they. This is the map size that they use for missions one and two. Um, I guess he didn't have time, or there was some limitation that meant he couldn't just, you know, expand that all the way across. 
So there's no keyboard shortcuts, it's just simply you click on a unit, you click where you want it to go, you... Uh, there's the sandworm. Is that going to be... a problem? Where is he going to come out? Yep, interesting. So, this was literally released today, this morning. Um, the developer has already fixed a couple of little issues that people reported really early on. Um, and I did tweet about checking this out on stream, but he had to go to bed. So, uh, I'm sure he'll catch up here. How, how great is this? This is just... It's like Dude 2, but on essentially a Game Boy. A really advanced Game Boy. It's such a beautiful, adorable little thing. It's like if they made a real-time strategy out of Micro Machines. That's what it feels like to me. So he has reproduced... Uh, this part of the PC game. But you don't. I don't think there's actually different maps for different um, uh, different missions. Yeah, so it just picks the next one that you're going to. Okay, so that's going to be mission C. I wonder how. I wonder how faithful it is to the actual original map. Yeah, I did. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I thought to do that. No, 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 no. Um. Okay, this is not the Mission C map. Not for Atreides, anyway. So, there's a few crucial little differences. He hasn't tried to reproduce the utterly crazy... Um, oh gosh, clicking as you're scrolling. Just tells them to go wherever the cursor is. So it's it controls a bit differently to the, uh, the full game. He hasn't, uh, as I was trying to say there, he hasn't reproduced the... Silly, you know, only reveals a tiny bit of the fog of map and then the fog of map, the, the fog of war, and then reveals it when the unit stops. I think every unit just reveals this much. Oh. Yep. Spice Bloom located. No, you're not. The, the, the trikes and quads are just fine for that. So there is a bit of an annoyance here. Uh, there's stuff going on in this corner down here, but you can't see it because the radar's in the way. Not sure what could be done to work around that. So something that isn't implemented yet is the cost to repair. So if I click on the refinery, there's a little spanner icon. If I click on that, that'll go green, and it does start repairing, but it doesn't actually cost anything. Same with all this. So you, you don't actually need concrete. Quite so urgently. All right, let's let's just take this slow. We'll build a silo. We'll just do this by uh, refining. So, did you actually get a chance to play this, um, Sakura? Oh, 
Oh, and when you... If building stops because you ran out of money, there's no... I don't think there's, like, a pause function. Just the first couple of missions, yeah. I think before I started this stream, I got up to mission three or thereabouts. And there's an interesting little change that uh, is in this that is not in the original game that I think maybe it should have been in some form. But we'll get to that. Uh -oh. One big change I really like conceptually is that the worms don't stop at the edge of, uh, of, of the rock. They go under the rock. It is so cool. It's so creepy. And I mean, in theory, the rock that is here would, would extend under the ground into the sand for, you know, hundreds of meters or whatever. Um, in the case of a really big rock, you'd assume it's like a massive iceberg of rock, I guess, in the desert. Um, so maybe, realistically, there wouldn't be all that room under the, uh, under the sand. But I absolutely adore the idea of the worm just disappearing under the rock, not having a clue where it is, and then just having it reappear. It's terrifying. So, and there's no no upgrades implemented, so we can just build a quad straight away if we wanted to. I'm very carefully not exploring near the top of the map because the enemy base is up here somewhere. I love how faithfully the music has been recreated. Um, I'm just going to completely skip past the entire discussion about copyright and so on. I'm going to see this as a piece of art on a wall, not not an entire... You know, I'm not reviewing this as a game that is, you know, on shelves in boxes trying to sell. This is art. A tribute. Yep. So if I tell him to return... Interesting that they try to drive to the top of the refinery and then just disappear and they don't actually drive into the building. Hooray, I'm a sand flea! I think the music skipping around a little bit in this view is because it's trying to balance uh, what's happening on screen with the actual music playing. I think there's a um, capability thing going on there. Which is kind of funny because in the end you're emulating a limitation of a physical system that was never built, which is kind of strange. But um, from the limited reading that I got in on the um, Pico 8 was that they they a lot of the limitations are intentional, but they tried to balance them to minimize uh, to minimize the problems that it, uh, that similar limitations cause with other older games. If that if if that entire sentence made any sense whatsoever, it's more about if you could design a gaming system 
of that age, but today, this is what it would end up as. Um, and the whole concept is entirely new to me. I didn't even know Pico 8, uh, Pico 8 was a thing until this morning. So this is... This is pretty damn cool. Okay, I now have the entire map. So this is this is mission three. This is into the big stuff now. So I wish there was a sound when you actually gave a unit an order. Um, Dune 2 had one, even if you had uh, voice samples turned off, there was still a little ding ding noise that it'd give you when you clicked on something. Um, at the moment, I'm kind of having a little trouble telling when I have actually done something, just because there's no feedback beyond the unit now doing something different. Yeah. That's, that's basically what it is, yeah. You know, you could actually call this a tribute to two different Franks. Because of course you have Frank Herbert, the author of the, uh, the original Dune novels. And then there's Frank Klepaki. Klepaki? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I've never actually said that word out loud. Um, and for a tiny system like the Pico 8 is meant to be, this is great music. It really is. Now, okay, so here's the um, here's the weird thing. We're in mission three, where we can build the heavy vehicle factory. So when I first saw that, I thought, what? Do we get tanks in mission three? Um, that would actually be kind of awesome because I hate mission three with a passion because you no longer have the uh, the option to finish mi the mission by gaining a certain amount of credits, you have to destroy the enemy base. And you have to do it with trikes and quads. And I guess infantry. Yeah, it's... it's. I don't like Mission 3. It really is a slug. So what we'll do is we'll build the we'll build the heavy factory. Yeah, you get troopers. I don't think. Do you get troopers in the autos mission? I think they only show up around mission four, where you actually start to be able to build troopers for autos. Oh, there's the worm. You know. Having a worm side alert is important in Dune 2, but I also love the fact that it is completely silent in this. Somehow that, that works for me. So, why can we build the heavy factory in Mission 3? It's so we can build extra harvesters. Should start repairing this stuff. And the way that this game, this version of Dune 2 is balanced, um, having extra harvesters is really important because of the way uh, they're slow to refine, but they are very quick. I think they're quicker in this version overall to bring money back into the base. Uh, the other thing I like about this is that units are a lot more automatic. So in the original game, that harvester being there would have been too far away from any spice fields to go to manually. Um, but in this, it's not a concern. It's just automatic. And in the same way, um, all of your other units actually default to guard mode, where they will actually go out and um, not patrol, but they will go and respond to any enemy units coming nearby. What is that? It's just a tiny pile of rock. That's cute.
And that kind of thing, having units automatically guard and the harvesters do their job better, that's really important for a version of the game, a port of the game like this. Simply because you've got such a... That's interesting. It draws the overlay of where the building's gonna go over the radar. That's a bit of a bug. Where was I going with that thought? Yeah, I like that it does a little bit more of the micromanagement for you. Uh, just because the interface is so limited. Like, yes, you can play it with the mouse, but even though we've got mouse controls, I don't have the keyboard shortcuts, it's a little bit more awkward to do things. Um, and while you couldn't do a lot of automation in the original game because it had to it had to work on a 486 for example I like that, you, that a you've been able to do it in this game and B that it has been done go excuse me uh now I just build stuff like crazy I guess let's build another Another light factory. So I don't think the worm actually seeks out units. It might just be a case that... If, he, if it happens to go underneath a unit, it will eat it. I guess that's how... I guess that's how it would behave. Interesting. Okay. I was going to build the fourth harvester, I'll do that now. So let's get this down, let's get this building of the quad. And production isn't paused when you're uh, repairing a thing. Which I guess is more CNC-like. Let's, let's try building... Oh, that's almost instant. That's convenient. Can build a barracks and a war. This is it's such a cute it, it's this is making me happy. This is so much fun. Yeah, it's it's cute. This is by far the cutest war simulator I have ever played. my heavy troopers. So the sprite for them doesn't look any different. I say sprite, but there's four pixels involved in drawing this guy. Um, I don't think the sprite looks any different between troopers and... Did he just walk? He is walking through my structures. If I tell him to go over here, he's gonna walk around. Why did this guy walk through? Was strange. So, as much as I love this, there's still. <sighs> I don't want anyone to think of, the, of any of this criticism. This is a really cool thing that's been done. I love it to bits. Even even if no further changes happen to it, I love this so much. But I do have some thoughts. Um, one is that the noise of 
the credits rolling in and then rolling back out again as I'm building stuff, that is an annoying noise and it's quite loud. It's not a soft little ding 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 ding, it is a very, it's a harsher noise. Um, I don't think the noise itself needs to change, but if the volume of it could be dropped by about 25% or so, that'd be a little bit more comfortable. Um, oh, I did also already check, there is no unit cap. So I can just build a massive wave of quads and start moving them down. But when I say start moving them down, that's going to take a lot. Now this will sound either paradoxical or hypocritical. I'm really not a fan of little remakes of Dune that people make that give them CNC-like controls. Um, being able to drag like a massive rectangle over a bunch of units and then select them all at once, that is obviously critical for every game that's come since. I don't feel it's generally necessary to do in Dune 2, just because of the way the game plays instead. Oh, that's interesting. He's, he's sort of stopped off-grid. Because... I think I gave him an order to move to the square that he was already in while he was moving. So some combination of those commands made him just stop there. Yeah, it really does. It just becomes another... Another thing. And it's unnecessary, partly because of the unit cap. So I should be able to build... How many have I got here? 5, 10... 15. Okay, so I'm near I'm near the 25 unit cap. Yeah, June 2000 didn't it didn't click for me either. It just felt like it just felt like a different skin on um on Red Alert, I think. That's all it is to me. There's something about the micromanagement you need to do in this game in particular that kind of that's what holds the charm for me. Exactly, yeah, it's just a reskin. Um, it didn't have the Dune X-Factor. And I really didn't like the way that units moved in Dune 2000 either. They, the weird sort of sprite rotation thing. For some reason it works better in this. I think because they are so small and cute. I think because it, it looks like a Micro Machines thing. That's, that's my frame of reference here. Uh, it looks a bit wrong in a serious strategy game, but this, I think it's... It kind of works. So, what was I getting at? This is a massive amount of units. They're going to take a very long time to move around. I hope what will happen when I get to the enemy base is that they start to guard wherever they stop, and they actually do things automatically. Like, if I can vaguely tell them one at a time to go somewhere, and then they go there and then they do further things, like they attack buildings, they attack units. That would be a really useful uh, adaptation for this version of the game. The Genesis port? I've never actually played that. I have seen plenty of um, footage on YouTube. I can't even... Oh boy. He can't... Because... Okay, because the controls are so limited, I can't just tell this guy to go to this spot on the radar map. I have to click down here and then click in the main area to make him move. So this is going to be slow. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is... I wish there was a way to make this not so slow that wasn't just the way that CNC does this. Um, this might also be hiding whatever shortcuts we're taking in pathfinding for this game. That would be amusing to see. 
but generally I'm quite happy with the pathfinding. I'm I'm not. It looks intelligent enough to me. Yeah, that's exactly it. And so I mean, this this you could play with a, a you know a gamepad or a joystick even. Um, it's just that because this is essentially an emulator of the system running on Windows that allows mouse input. That's the key thing. That's the only reason this game is playable. Because I can use the mouse. Um, I honestly don't understand how people played the Genesis port. And to be completely frank, that wasn't as faithful a port of Dune 2 as this is. This is just so much so much closer to the original game than I think the, the Genesis one was. Yeah, Warcraft... Warcraft kind of worked like that. Um, the feature that I think I was thinking of earlier was... I don't know which game it started in, but I know in Red Alert 2 there was a keyboard shortcut to select all units of a particular type across the map or across the view. And something like that, being able to do that... Oh boy, they're not stopping. Okay. Oh, I was building a silo. Like, to make this a slightly easier game to play... Oh wow, he's he's retreating back to his base. That didn't happen in the original. Um, okay, what's happening down here? Hey, I wonder if you destroy the harvester if they get a free one. Oh gosh, it is, yeah. It is very hard to click on units. I'm going to have to use the other button, which is Z, to cancel the fact that I've got a unit selected before I start moving another one. Because they are very difficult to redirect while they're moving around. Yeah, so my, my point is, I think it happened after... That's a brand new harvester, that's interesting. I think it happened after this game is what I'm getting at there. I'm gonna have to get into the habit of just pressing Z after telling a move uh, after telling the unit to move. But before selecting another one. That's what I'm gonna have to do. And it's a very weird habit to get into. And see there, I tried to get this guy to move and I accidentally clicked on a different unit. Okay cool, so he just popped into existence there. So there's no carry olds apparently, it just blips. Oh, this is interesting. I'm I'm not pressing Z. I'm not cancelling anything. I'm clicking on a unit, I'm telling it to attack an enemy structure, and it's dropping the unit from, from focus so that I can actually uh, I did not expect there to be screen shake. That is so cool. Oh, 
I was not expecting there to be screen shake. Okay, so there's some inconsist inconsistencies. Um, you can't select a structure if it's not fully revealed out from under the fog of war. And as I was telling these guys to attack the construction yard, I wasn't actually telling them to attack it. I was telling them to move there because the game wasn't letting me recognize the construction yard as a structure just yet. But then once it was fully revealed, I was then clicking stuff and telling it to go and attack and it was actually... Okay, now it's happening inconsistently. Like I'm clicking... Do I have to reveal more around it? Not sure what the distinction was there. Gosh, I know it's such a simple thing, but that screen shake makes me feel like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> it's just such a special little thing. It absolutely is. It's like, yeah, it's... Oh, I can't get enough of it. Okay, so these guys are not automatically attacking structures. I wish they did. Because now I am having to micromanage them a fair bit. I do like the tiny noises they make when they actually attack things. It's not blam blam, it's not pew pew pew, it's just tick 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 tick. I'm telling them to attack that and nothing's happening. Hey, they're going for it. Okay, concurrency thing. I'm trying to figure out the percentage in this um, in this harvester, but the spice lost message is sort of overriding it. Like, if I click it madly, I can see it's at about 90 something percent. Actually, I wonder. So he's driving back to where the refinery was. What does he do after that? It just stops, okay. Because in the original, if you blow up the refinery before the harvester came back, it would just stop dead once it hit 100% of the spice. But he actually returns to the rock. That's, that's a slightly smarter decision there. Yeah, they're repairing this. That's annoying. Stop interfering with me, with me destroying your base, please. It's quite annoying. Harkonnen is misspelt there. It was missing an N. So that... Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is, this is, this is garbage now. I'm, I'm going to stop playing the game. They, they misspelt Harkonnen. Um, I'm sure that's just like in a text file that he's got somewhere that he just hits, uh, N, control S, re pack it, whatever. Um, that view with a map of Arrakis and the different spots, I've been a little conflicted about that for a little while. Um, I'm not even sure I greeted It's Too Early. Thanks for stopping by. I'm really sorry. I, I, I responded to your message but didn't actually um, think to say hello. So, hello. Thank you for dropping by. Um, 
the view of the map where on the PC version you pick which one you're going to next. I've been a little conflicted about that in this because it's it's kind of unnecessary because you don't actually large concrete. Let's you don't actually select where you're going next. It's it feels a little wasted. But having watched it a couple of times now where it just sort of uh, I guess shows you the next the next areas, it kind of gives me the feel, not that I'm missing out on a particular battle, but that someone else is, you know, there are other commanders helping to conquer Dune and they're taking the other ones. So I don't actually mind that as much. Um, I think it was in the... Is this the Mission 9 map? This is the map from Mission 9. I am almost positive. Because you get this tiny little, ro uh, tiny little rocky outcrop that gets all your rocket uh, turrets. For some reason, this is the Mission 9 map. I don't know. I hope there's only one base. Did I...? Oh, there is a pause feature. I accidentally clicked on it. That's interesting. So before the stream, I did actually um, skip up to the ninth mission with the Trades, just to see how faithful it was to the original. And it is. It is really faithful. The only thing that's a little bit different, which I don't... Maybe the original author isn't aware of this, but there's actually a difference in the mission nine maps based on which... Uh, which house you play. It's not a huge difference, it's mostly in where the other two are. Um, <clears throat> obviously the the side of car are always in the middle of the map, but the two on either side, I think they change around. They change what buildings are there to try and balance the game a little bit more. Um, but the main thing that I noticed is that... Did I just tell him to go straight to the refinery? I did. That was silly. There is actually a big difference, which is that uh, if you're playing as Harkonnen, um, somewhere around here and then around here, there's these two there's two long columns of concrete in the middle of the map, and they end in like little outposts of like four rocket turrets each, and they're like a um, just a defensive thing essentially. Those are not present. Those rocket launchers are not in the map for Atreides Mission Nine, so. It is actually subtly different. I don't think it will make a huge amount of difference to playthroughs of this. Okay, this isn't the Mission 9 map, it just is very reminiscent of it for some reason. Oh, I'm out of money. So that recognition, that's my mistake, but the um, the thing with the rocket launchers is that's definitely a difference that's there. So I've paused this, but there's no indication, there's no little icon. Um, maybe in the same way that there's a little uh, spanner to say that you can repair a thing, there could be like a little pause icon or something on here. Yeah, this is this is mission four. What 
what am I doing? What do I want to do next? I'm gonna need to start popping out tanks pretty soon. Um, interestingly, I can build the heavy factory before the light factory. So this doesn't quite follow the static tech tree. That's weird, I wanted to click there. No, this isn't the first mission with turrets. That's mission 5, because you get the turrets at the same time as you get um, the rocket tanks. Unless you're autos, of course, because you can't build them. Uh, special units? Yes. So I did in my... Did he go... He's driving off the map. What? There's like a little flash of green and he just disappears off the map and then reappears. That's very strange. Hey, Full Tilt Mama, thanks for dropping by. Okay, a minor, minor frustration with the pathing is that it feels like it takes, because it, it takes time to rotate, um, and if you tell it to move somewhere different while it is moving, it still has to go into that spot and then turn around. It feels a little sluggish. Like, if I'm... If I'm trying to very carefully map out a bit of area, reveal the um, the terrain, that feels a little bit difficult to do. Okay, so we've got combat tanks, MCVs, and that's it. Cute. So curious that in mission three we could build harvesters, but not tanks or MCVs. Interesting decisions. Uh, special units. Sorry, you asked that question. So, uh, the start of mission—I was literally in there for like thirty seconds just to play around and see if that if that um, difference was there in the map. Um, but you do start with like I did see Sonic tanks, so they're definitely there. I don't know how the Fremen, the Saboteur, and the ah, uh, what an adorable little. Cute. That's what five by. This is this 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 tank is made of thirty pixels. It's adorable. Uh, harvester. Let's build a couple more of those. And we're gonna need some more power. So I guess 08 is like doing the um, the 07 salute, but uh, just one more serious. Gonna build a bunch of wind traps. I'm gonna yeah, still got some stuff to repair. I think what I might do because I've been streaming now for three hours, um, I might get to the end of this mission and then call it a day. Less than two. But... Uh, yeah, okay. Um, what am I doing? Want another harvester? I need to... And then I need to start pumping out the tanks. I need another heavy factory. Something else I wish I could do in this game is, even though I've got mouse control,
even though I've got mouse control, I can't use... Because uh, the arrow keys just do the same thing, they move the cursor around. It's like, I guess that's to, to have interoperability with like a, a gamepad. If you wanted to play this like the Genesis version, I suppose you could. Um... But what I wish I could do is use the arrow keys to move the camera view around while still using the mouse. That's probably too much to ask for considering the point of this port. But like I'm, I'm used to, you know, zooming around on the radar anyway, so it's not a huge issue, but... Let's get another sailor down. Yeah, thanks. It's this has been fun. I generally, honestly, don't expect people to show off my streams. Um, a little over a year. I started when the remake of Crystal Caves came out. Something just got eaten. And then the worm disappeared. I guess that means it died. Yeah, started late 2020. Um, I'm a very casual streamer. I'm not doing this. I'm not trying to get partner. I'm not... You know, this is this is literally just the fun. This is to share some games and some gameplay with people. Like this. Essentially. Gonna build all the tanks. Right, you can tell it's a good version of the game when I'm already doing stuff like this. I am because I can't build a wall or a turret yet, I'm using my infantry to plug this gap so that the harvesters don't spawn here and disappear. Yeah, I'm, I have to say I'm kind of picky with what I do watch. Um, my time, unfortunately, is quite limited by work and some other things. Um, I do tend to watch some fairly esoteric stuff, like speed run, like if, if I happen to spot someone else speedrunning Dune 2, absolutely I'd watch that. Um, I also, there's a guy I follow who speedruns the original XCOM game. Um, or the the open XCOM remake of it, which is a bit more user friendly. Um, I love watching that. And it's hard to say what are what are people's interests. Um, like the, the 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 two hours that I spent the other day just. Oh. Like the two hours I spent the other day just racing harvesters. Did not expect that to be anywhere near as interesting for people as it actually has turned out to be. Why are you still trying to- oh, okay. So those are wall sections. By now, the original, this guy would have been blown to absolute shreds. Uh, and he's just not getting aggro on all these other units. He's getting followed by a quad. Okay, so he, he drove within like a square of the trike, and that woke up the trike. Yeah, that'll do.
So I've not actually played the later levels, but I guess the way that this game will balance the fact that it is a little harder to play... Uh, the way that it balances that... Oh look, it's Africa. The way it balances it, balances it, I think, is just by making the game easier. Like, it's... By this point in the regular game, I'd have been swamped by enemy tanks by now. Yeah, okay, it is a bit awkward to move groups of units around. It's like herding cats. Um, and I mean, that's always been how Dune 2 is played. But in particular, this feels a little... a little tedious. So I think the way this game is going to balance it is just by making the game easier to play, easier to win. Um, the developer was already talking to a guy on Twitter um, before I started this. Um, who said he'd already be he'd already gotten up to or at least beaten uh, mission nine? Ah, this is interesting. I wanted these guys to go and attack the base, but they're being drawn back here. Not sure what to make of that. I guess I can't attack on the same the same vector as the enemy is attacking. Otherwise, my units will go back to base. <laughs> Oh no, they've... They've been completely hoodwinked. And now these guys are all just... Okay, Quad, was it really worth doing that? You've come all this way to finish off that one unit. The construction yard, I guess, would be the obvious first attack. So let's do that. Let's send some guys to the top corner. Why are they going up there? Are they still following the quad that ran away? I think that's what they're doing. Okay, let's get... an army of about... Six tanks. That should be more than enough to take that out. I do like that I can see proportionally more of the map than in the original game. Like, this isn't just... I think the original game view is like 10 squares and then 16 across. This feels bigger than that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, it's 17. But then it'll be 17 by something much taller than it normally is. My base is getting attacked. And my plugging infantry have gone away. He's going home with his tail between his legs. <sighs> you know what? <laughs> you can come along. Yeah, okay, so if an enemy attack swings past your main attacking force, they all chase it back to your base. That's... kind of strange. Yeah, 
Um, I don't know, earlier I was talking about I want this game to do more things for me. I want it to micromanage my units a little bit more. Um, that's clearly a harder thing to balance than it sounds like. That's interesting. So I told the quad to attack the construction yard and it walked around the wall. Can quads? Yes. Oh, I guess it's all units. Do I have to tell them to... Do they attack the wall if I... They do. I love how there's smoke and fire coming out of the wall. Okay, that wall section was... Uh, I feel a lot harder to destroy than in the original game. And units are clearly not... Where are you going? Yeah, okay, so... How this game handles the wall sections, I don't think is quite optimal yet. Because so I try to get these units to attack. He's driven all the way around the base... ...to attack the spice silo there. Where are you going? Yeah, okay, because they all move around in response to enemy units coming close, it definitely feels a bit like herding cats. It's definitely good for what it is, don't get me wrong. Um, it just feels a little less straightforward. Um, I never actually played Dark Raid. Oh, when I look away, these cats are just everywhere now. Let's, let's kill this quad. These guys... Can attack the factory. Where are you? Why did he drive there? He's off-grid. Why did he drive off-grid... ...to attack the factory? No, this guy's off-grid. Also, I really love the noise that harvesters make when they pop out of the refinery. So if I shoot this guy... I love that little... That noise. I think it. I think it's actually the unit dying. Um, it just sounds like... But because it disappears and then at the exact same moment a new one comes out of the refinery, it just sounds like the refinery is farting out a new harvester. So this is, this is balanced well enough that I think about the same number of units in the original game would have done the same amount of damage to this base. I'm really impressed with how precisely it's been balanced. Infantry is still way too slow to be useful for a base attack. Focus on getting the uh, refinery down. I wonder if these guys fire slowly if I don't look at them. Nope, that is not a thing. What 
was that noise? Oh, that noise was one of my infantry being squashed by a harvester. Okay, let's take out the war. Because they are actively building units, that's pretty cool. Supreme Commander. That is a game that I struggle with personally. There's a lot going on. Um, my memories of playing multiplayer Supreme Commander with my friends are not great. I guess partly because I grew up playing games like Dune 2 where the... I guess playing the way to play the game is very very similar whereas Supreme Commander you need a very different mindset. You need to be continually balancing you know eco and attack and strategy and the tech tree and what you're actually building and that I honestly found a little bit too complex for me as a gamer to really enjoy especially when it's easy to have such a disparity of skill between between players even even two novices it can become very apparent that one is significantly a better player than the other um, I probably the game that I remember the most that I played against my friends was that I focused entirely on anti-aircraft stuff so I knew that one of my friends in particular would always come and attack with planes and when he did come and attack even though I'd spent the entire time focusing on anti-air all of my anti-air was taken out by his air I was just bombed no matter what so Subcom itself feels fairly frustrating to me. It's not a game that I would play, but I love watching it. Um, there's a fellow on YouTube uh, called Guile. So if you search for Guilecast, so G-Y-L-E-C-A-S-T, he does really great narrations of Subcom games. Um, and I get way more enjoyment out of watching those than I do actually playing the game. So if you're into Subcom, highly recommend that. Man, I should stop and get lunch, but I don't want to stop playing this. This is so fun. So this is interesting, so this is the point of the game where you've just realised the, the Emperor is coming for you as well. Um, did I finish that mission before the Sadukar attacked, or are they just not in the game just yet? Not sure what to make of it. Uh, I think I'm going to keep going for a little bit. I'm really getting into a groove here now. Is that rock? That's like a little bit of rock, okay. I think this might be an MCV map. There is not a lot of surface area here. Yeah, it's um... It's nearly 4pm here in Australia. I need lunch. I haven't eaten since breakfast. Oh, you can too! Of course, okay.
So the tech tree, this is very different. Um, I'm building my first heavy vehicle factory and I've only put down a wind trap and two refineries. I guess to make it easier to build things and, and progress. Um, but it's becoming a bit easier to tell how the, um, the other fellow on Twitter has already finished the game. It's not particularly easy. He did say he took four hours to do so, though. <clears throat> um, I don't want to draw myself into speedrunning this game. But it would not take me four hours to do this, if, if each of the missions is this easy. I can build a harvester, but not tanks. Why can't I build tanks yet? Do I need a light vehicle factory as well? This is interesting. Yeah, I really need a pause icon. This is... This tiny bar is too... too slow, too... <clears throat> too indistinct. factory. Can I now build tanks? No. Is it the outpost? Right, that's why I I was pressing shift, not Z. That's why that wasn't working. So with every unit seeing the same distance... Um, I wonder if that'll hold true for the rocket tanks as well, because if it does... That means it's going to remain useful to have quads throughout the entire game because they're better scouts than the tanks, just because they're faster. Yeah, Oh, Right, this is that mission. Uh, let's get a couple of harvesters out first. Oh, this is beautiful. X? Why can't I? This is mission five. Is the tech tree stepped up a little bit? Because this stuff is normal. The cannon turret is normal. I don't think I saw a rocket turret in there. No. But I can build a house of X. That shouldn't show up until mission seven. What happens if I build a House of X? What do I get? In Mission 5. You're right, yeah, that is the siege tank info. Harvest is correct, MCV is correct, combo tank's correct, it's just the rocket launcher. I wonder if I start. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there.
So that's the House of X. Nothing extra there. Yeah, I think I think this being here this early is just a um just a bug. Okay. I'm gonna have to call the uh cut this short in about 10 minutes. Um, so I'm not going to try and finish this one. I'm just going to play around and see how all this works. So this is the rocket launcher. Let's see what his visual range is like. Why is it... It's got some strange pathfinding. Oh, there's the autos. I like this. This is cool. So there's clearly no minimum range on the rocket launchers, and they do a ton of damage. He's now running away. That's really cool. Less cool is all my units running after it, but the idea that they run back to base is pretty cool. Oh, and they're already attacking my base. That's inconvenient. But they went after the... No, that was the House of X, so they went after the X, and then they were going after the Light Factory? And now he's going after the harvesters, I guess because it's just a unit. Okay. Yep, alright, I'm going to have to call it here. Um, it's been three and a half hours and one world record. And a lot of really- Oh cool, because the harvester is damaged, it's still smoking on the refinery. That is a cool feature. I love this as a touch, that's that's great. Um, yeah, June 2, June 2 was great. This is really fun. Um, I think we're going to play some more of this. Um, definitely on stream, because this is really fun to mess around with. Even though my base is currently getting blown to pieces. Um, so yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, follow me on Twitch, you'll get notifications when I go live. I don't have a, ske a set schedule, I am I'm a leaf on the wind. Um, usually I stream maybe like a day or two on the weekend, that's about it. Um, but it's always stuff like this. I, I like Dune 2, I'm playing Dune 2 a lot, um, so my next few streams are likely to be that. So thanks for hanging out, um, stay safe, see you soon.